Okay, a nice simple question. What's yeah. going to happen in the next 10,000 years? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, listen, what, what is very clearly happening to a much greater extent now than it ever has throughout human history is that people are moving around much more. Um, the rate of migration is increasing exponentially. Um, you know, think about the person you might be dating or married to and think about how far apart you might have been born. Um, you know, typically these days it's hundreds or even thousands of miles. Uh, if you go back through European church records, which, you know, go back several hundred years, so they're a good place to start, um, and you look at the distance between spouses' birthplaces, you have to enter that in the church record when you get married, for most of recorded history, so this is starting kind of 15th, 16th century and going up to the present, for most of that time, people were born five to ten kilometers, so a few miles apart. You're marrying somebody from the same village or somebody from the next village over. And then in the Industrial Revolution around 1800, that explodes. Suddenly people are moving around, and it, that's happening even more today. Um, people are moving around to a much greater extent. And so everybody's entering this melting pot. And I sometimes jokingly say we're all becoming more like Tiger Woods. You know, we're meeting people from all over the world, and we're mixing, and you know, the, the kids are mixed, and their children are even more mixed. And so you know, clearly that is a prediction of what is going to happen over the next few hundred years. What is also going to happen, and this is something that comes out of uh, the work that we've been doing recently in the Genographic Project and, and the results we've been getting, it's becoming more and more clear to us that when we look at the timing of these migratory events, the big events, particularly in the Paleolithic, but even as we move into the Neolithic, the last 10,000 years with the advent of farming and expansion of empires and so on, many of these migratory events, the big ones, seem to have been driven by shifts in climate. And, you know, this could have to do with the Ice Age, it has to do with the way the Earth precesses in its orbit and shifts in the, the Sahara patterns, um, you know, it's wetter sometimes and drier other times. Um, changing sea levels in Southeast Asia, changing sea levels, allowing the Bering Land Bridge to be created between Asia and, and the Americas, allowing people to populate the Americas. I mean, time and time again, we see these major migrations driven, in large part, by climatic shifts. And obviously we are going into another period of climate change. Um, you know, you can debate the extent to which humans are causing this. Um, in my opinion, yes, we clearly are contributing to it, but we're also in a broader warming trend, which has been going on for the last few hundred years and is probably going to continue for many more hundreds of years. And that's going to have a huge effect on the, the areas, the climate of the areas where people live. And places like the Sahel region in Africa, which is marginal at best, um, are being replaced by desert. And so what are these people going to do when they can't grow food anymore? Well, they're either going to die or they're going to have to move somewhere else. What about the people living in low islands like the Maldives and Tuvalu, which I visited about a year and a half ago doing some research for a book? You know, 10 feet high at the highest point, and as sea levels rise, what are people going to do? Well, they're going to have to leave or they're going to drown. So, you know, climate change is going to continue to influence and, and motivate people to migrate around the world. Um, and, you know, I think one of the big issues in the next century is going to be dealing with these climate refugees. What are you going to do with millions of people, perhaps hundreds of millions of people, driven to leave the place where they live today by a climate shift, which makes it untenable to live there anymore?